If I die of some physical illness that I cause upon myself, <laughs> the sins that I cause, well and good. But I don't want to die violently. I don't want to die no airplane crash. You know, I'm flying around. Long. I don't want to die violently or none of that. I want to die doing the work of the Lord. Amen. 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 I would rather just have a heart attack and say, what? And just drop. Y'all probably say, boy, God struck him down. <laughs> but I'd rather die doing You see a lot of entertainers that want to die while they're entertaining. They work until their death. You know, because that's what they love the most. So this is what I love the most. Amen. 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 Did we read 103? Uh, no, 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 no. All right, 103 verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that what? Fear. fear. That's what you need to help the fear of the Lord. Amen. Psalms 135. Y'all pray for me out there. That was Psalms 103 verse 11. Now we're going to Psalms 135. 135 verse 5. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. He had to mention it again. He had to keep letting me know. I'm above any God you can choose. Amen. 145. Psalms 145. Verse, verse 3. 145 and 3. It says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is what? Unsearchable. Wow. It can go on and on forever. See, y'all don't understand. If you don't like learning right now about God, I don't know what you're going to do when you get to heaven. Because you will ever be learning for eternity. You will ever be singing praises unto him for eternity. So if you don't like singing praises and you don't like learning who God is, I don't know what to say. Everything might not be a place for you. Because <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to love it. It ain't going to be no hard because we won't get tired. We won't get weak. We won't be, you know, come on. And watch this. It ain't no marriage in heaven either, except for one, to Jesus. Marriage is an earthly thing. I think it's in Mark where he says, there's neither marriage or death. There's no need for it. Amen. Psalms 147, verse 5. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is what? Infinite. Good God Almighty. Now y'all see why I was running around last week just like, oh my goodness, ooh, wow, this is powerful. That's me. I just love the word. What can I say? You know, when I see stuff like that, it just enlightens me, encourages me. I understand what David be talking about when you're going through something and you're depressed. Go encourage yourself. Because your neighbor may not be able to encourage you. The preacher may not be able to encourage you. Your brother or your family or your husband or your wife may not be able to encourage you. But when you get into God's word and learn with his word, then that word will encourage you. So David knew how to encourage himself. See, I don't mind being alone, sir. I don't mind sitting in the room by myself. I can sit there for hours and just study. You know, I get so enlightened. Matter of fact, sometimes I even hate, it, hate, my, hate that time to be in a room. My wife may need something, or my son may need something. I'll be like, yeah. but I get up and go do it. <laughs> like, y'all just missed up my time. <laughs> but I can't be selfish either. Right? Now, if you want to look at a guy, I want everybody to go to Judges chapter 11. This is the part that I say, God, give me some understanding. We're going to go to Judges, Old Testament, chapter 11. When we're talking about a guy, his name is Jacob. And at first I was like, God, why are you giving me this story to show how great you are? I really couldn't put it together. But I obey God. So we're going to look at the story, and maybe you'll see his greatness. But one of the things in this story that reminded me, uh, uh, this story, it reminded me of me. And I'll tell you why, because my mother, I'm an only child. My father had 24 other kids. Hello. My mother was mentally retarded, couldn't read or write. I was a mistake by the world standard. But was I truly a mistake? I don't think so. Amen. So this story, not only was Japheth an only child, Japheth also had an only child that was a daughter. I'm an only child, and my only child is a daughter. Y'all hear me? So let's look at this story. Let's see, let's, see, let's let it talk for itself. So Judges chapter 11. 
Let me get there. And Holy Ghost, move any way you want to move. <coughs> and let's start at verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 12. I would love to read the whole chapter. But let's start at verse 1. Now some of these words I ain't going to be able to pronounce. The Old Testament forgive me. All right? And if you know how to pronounce it, be my guest. Okay? Especially these folks' names. All right? All right, starting at verse 1. Now Jacob the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor. You know what a mighty man of valor is? Right? He was strong. He was a warrior. And he was the son of a harlot. He was the son of a whore. Amen. And Gil Gilad begat Jacob. Now, Gilad means he went on down to the hose house and paid her, had sex with her, and she wound up getting pregnant. Hello? She wound up getting pregnant. Boy, I'd have been on the Maury show. Hello? <laughs> I don't know, they just knew they was there. So, okay. I've been like, DNA check, Jack. <laughs> but Gilad, verse 2, but Gilad's wife, now how did his wife know about this? Now Gilad's wife bare him sons. Sound like me a little bit. My daddy had 24 other little kids. I don't know what they looked like or nothing, but there was a lot of them. I met them all once when we were only 15 children. And I found out by the time he died, he had 10 more of us or something. I don't know. Amen. All I do is me, my mama. All right? And Gilad's wife bare them sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust, they thrust out Jacob and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. You ain't getting no inheritance. Get out. They kicked him out. They made him homeless. We don't care about you. Go on the road and die. You know, the funny thing, I didn't think about this. Why does daddy come back and get him? Wait a minute, that's my boy. I know y'all, yeah, how many of y'all feel that? Yeah. Amen. Why did my dad say something? Yeah. You let your sons put me out, but I'm your son too? Yes. But they put him out, daddy didn't say a word. <laughs> Verse 3. Then Jacob fled from his brother, and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men. You know what vain men mean? Criminals. Yes. Criminals, those who want to do mischief. Those who ain't got nothing else to do but stick you up, rob your house, sell drugs, sell them, do whatever they can do to make a dollar. Hello? They always scheming. They got a game, they got a con, they got something going on. So he joined himself to these vain men. Vain men joined themselves to Jacob and went out with him. Verse 4, <coughs> excuse me. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Adam made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jacob out of the land of Tob. Now watch this. Now all of a sudden, people in this country want to come against Israel, and the first person they think of to go fight a battle for was who? Jacob. Because Jacob was wind up homeless. Jacob learned the vain men's ways of doing things. In other words, Jacob learned how to operate the hood. Oh, no. Hello. Jacob became streetwise. He knew how to fight. Hello. Now we need him now. Let's go back and get him. How many of y'all? Uh, yeah. How many of my family members get in trouble? All of a sudden now they think about you. Amen. Especially when it's a fight on. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, brother. We, we, we need that crazy one in the family. <laughs> we gotta go get nutty for pressure and bring him up in here. <laughs> so let's go down here and talk to Jacob. But remember, he joined himself to the amen. Amen? Verse 6. And they said unto Jacob, come and be our captain. We're going to make you the leader. Come on, be our captain. And that, you, that we may fight with the children of Adam. And Jacob said unto the elders of Gilead, did not you hate me? And expel me out of my father's house? Did you kick me out? Did you make me homeless? Didn't you put me on the street? You didn't give me a meal. You didn't care how I would live or something. Uh, Hello? Come on now. Come on now, bro. Now you coming to me? Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Oh, no. Now watch that. Watch the next slide. He said, and Jacob said unto the verse seven, the elders of the did not you hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are you coming to me now when you are in distress? In, in why are you coming to me now when you're in trouble? You ain't care where I got a meal. You ain't care where I got a club. You didn't care where I was sleeping. Now all of a sudden you're gonna get your tail when you want to come to me. Amen. 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 Hello. Now watch this. 
attitude. I know it seems funny, but Japheth had more vengeance on his mind than the greatness of God. You're going to see in a minute. Verse 8. So the elders of Gilead said unto Japheth, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. We're going to make you the president. <laughs> We're going to let you run things, bro. Come on, just fight with us. We beg you. We're going to let you run it all. Hmm. Hmm. Amen. Verse 9. And Jesus said unto the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon. Now, if you let me back in, this is what I asked for. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you want me to come home? Be president? <laughs> My check but ain't no bother. No. <laughs> no. He said, If you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jacob, The Lord be witness between us, you go to vow, if we do not so according to your words. Now he got it. Because it was very powerful to make a very powerful to make a vow to God back then. Even as the scripture in Ecclesiastes, they defer not to make a vow unto God and not keep it, because he doesn't delight in fools. Yo, I can make you a promise, but you better not make God no promise and break it. Yes. But I can make you a promise and break it. But if you make God a promise and break it, watch out. Yo. Amen. Verse 11. Then Japheth went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Japheth uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Now, I'm getting ready now. I want to read the whole story. Now, between there and verses 29, there's a big argument between Ammon and Jacob, and they were arguing over the land. And even they told the reason why we want to beat up Israel is because Israel stole the land from us. And Jacob's like, you need to come to my hometown. You put, you put your foot on my land, we all wrong. I'm just making a plan. Okay? So now they had all these big arguments. So the grumble getting ready to kick. All right? First they tried the dialogue. What's going to happen? Jacob said, you come down here, we whipping you in town. But watch it. <clears throat> Verse 29. Same chapter. Same chapter, verse 29. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jacob, and he passed over Gilad and uh, Massa, and passed over Mizpah and Gilad, and from Mizpah over to Gilad, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jacob vowed, and Jacob vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou with, without fail deliver the children of Ammon unto my hands, watch this, shall pay close attention. Wow. Then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall truly be the Lord's and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. He said, now Lord, I vow this unto you. You let me win this war. Whoever comes out of my door, I will kill him and offer it up to you as a sacrifice. Y'all hear yeah, Whoever shows up first out of my door, I'm going to kill him. See, his thinking was crazy. He thought it was going to be some dog. He thought it might be a princess coming. You can kill princess. But let's watch and see what happens. Amen? Yes. Verse 32. So Jacob passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smacked them from uh, Arab, whatever that's it, even till thou come to Minnith, even twenty cities, and unto the plain of vineyards, with a with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jacob came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, <laughs> we have verse 34, y'all. <laughs> and behold, everybody keep crossing this camera, please stop. Stop. Thank you. You're, you're knocking me off. You never should cross the man of God while he's preaching. That's, that's dis disrespectful. Plus it throws that man of God off. Okay? Just totally disrespectful. Amen. Pick back up at 34. And Jacob came to Mizpah unto the house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances. And she was his only child. Y'all see that? Yes. Who's the first one to come out of the house? His daughter. His only child, his daughter. Yes. What was the vow he made to God? First one. Give He's going to sacrifice that. Sacrifice the first thing that came. Give it up. Y'all probably saying, how is this equal to it? God, behold, the only thing greater than yourself. Remember what I said? I held yes. my daughter up before the right. only thing greater than thyself? Yes. 
This was the greatest thing to Jacob. His daughter. Let's keep reading. His daughter, thou has brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord and cannot go back. He told his daughter, oh my God, I made a vow to God, you the first one come, now I got to do what God told me, what I promised God. But watch the daughter's attitude. I don't know if I could have did this. Could you kill your child? No. And say something, God? Mm. It takes a lot of faith, don't it? It takes a lot of love for the Lord, don't it? You got to know he's great to offer your child up to God. You got to know you're going to see her again. You got to know this whole thing is real when you do something like this. Amen. Verse 36. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which has proceeded out of thy mouth. Please take the child out before you. You gotta keep 